If you have ever played Gran Turismo, there is a high chance you have come across this car, the Suzuki Escudo. If you haven't, well, you have probably missed the experience with one of the most legendary cars in the racing game's history. Featured for the first time in Gran Turismo 2, the Suzuki Escudo was ridiculously fast. So fast, that owning it would make the game incredibly easy to finish. Since for most of the races the Escudo was eligible, and the average opponents were some Opel Corsa, Lotus Elise and generic Sunday Cup sport cars, it was literally impossible not to win every single race. Even on the higher tiers and on the final championship of the game, the competition was nowhere near the pace of the Escudo. Owning this car would make your game. Literally, you could win 90% of the races with that car. However, the same can't be said for the following chapters like Gran Turismo 3, Gran Turismo 4 and onward. With the Escudo losing the crown of the most bugged car in the game to faster vehicles like open wheelers and futuristic prototypes. As the years went by, the Suzuki slowly lost its charm, becoming a sort of useless car. But still, it kept a special place in the memories of every Gran Turismo players, as it marked the history of the whole game. But what about the history of the real car? The Escudo was a literal monster in the virtual world, but what about the real world? What is the story behind the development of this monster for rally competitions like the famous Pikes Peak? Well, there is a lot to say. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Japanese racing driver Nobuhiro Tajima, nicknamed Monster, he specialized in rally and hill climb racing. He started racing at the age of 18 in national rallies and made his WRC debut at the 1981 Welts Rally with a Datsun. In 1986, his story binds to Suzuki forever, and his first participation in the prestigious Pikes Peak hill climb arrives in 1989. Five years later, Suzuki built, specifically for this race, a car with two engines, each one driving two wheels for a combined power of almost 900 horsepower. On top of that, the car was light, it used to weight only 900 kilograms. Driving this beast, Monster finished fifth in 1994, and one year later he won the event outright, becoming the first Japanese to do so. That edition was run on a shortened track, however, so the winning time cannot be considered as a track record. This win convinced Suzuki to develop an even faster car, and trying to achieve so, in 1996 they raised the bar even higher. Despite switching from one single engine and losing as a consequence around 100 horsepower, the new 96 edition of the Escudo counted on a rapid shift in six sequential gearbox, which gave the possibility to squeeze all the power of the car thanks to the four-wheel drive system and the new double wishbone suspensions. Development after development, Suzuki continued to evolve its car even afterwards, finally reaching its best shape in 1998, thanks to an aluminum space frame completely designed from scratch which brought the overall mass to 800 kg, a new twin turbocharged V6 pushing 981 horsepower and two massive spoilers in both front and rear of the car, accurately designed and tested in the wind tunnel facility to ensure maximum grip and downforce at high speed. Started as a simple hill climb car, the Escudo slowly lost its base and primitive version, becoming an overwhelming time attack monster, a monster like its main driver. The two perfectly matched names, however, didn't make it another time to the top of Pike's Peak, as Tajima never had another win after the 1995 one, but sadly, only three different second places. The interest in the car that Gran Turismo players developed, combined with three consecutive wins of Tejima in the famous Silverstone Race to the Sky, convinced Suzuki to keep the project alive. In 2006, Suzuki had plans for the World Rally Championship, but due to various reasons, the official team debuted only in 2008. Waiting for the WRC program to start, in 2007 the XL7 replaced the Escudo at the infamous race. The course was half paid and Tajima clocked a time that was barely over 10 minutes, winning the overall again, and signing a new outright record, 
beating Road Millen's one by two and a half seconds. In 2008, albeit being 17 seconds slower, he will win for the third consecutive time. Galvanized by the good trend, now both Suzuki and Tajima were dreaming of a sub 10 minutes time, and the record for most consecutive wins, six, belonging to Bobby Unser and achieved between 1958 and 1963. From 2009 on, Suzuki presented the SX4 Pikes Peak, mounting a twin-turbo 3-liter engine. Tajima dominated the following two editions, and now he won the race six times, of which five straight. He was at that moment the best non-American driver in the competition, and there was still room for more. In 2011, the road was 76% paved, as it has never been before. Conditions were favorable for a new, iconic, all-time outright record, and the only one man who deserved to achieve this was Monster Tajima. At the top of the hill, with a bright sun, the time was stopped at 9 minutes and 51 seconds. The first man to go below 10 minutes was him, who built a gap of 18 seconds from Rhys Millen, runner-up in the race. Monster now had six consecutive wins, most of all time. He tied a record that lasted 48 years, a record that was signed when he was only 12, a record that unexpectedly now he shares with another motorsport legend. From 2012, Suzuki was never able again to compete for the win. The time was lowered again, and today stands at 7 minutes and 57 seconds in the hands of Romain Dumas. Tejima will continue to compete at the Pikes Peak, but switching to electric cars, setting twice the fastest time in the class and achieving several podiums. The story of Suzuki in motorsport hasn't got a happy ending. The WRC program was a failure, and with the activity on track racing that was near to zero, they quitted international motorsport. Official Suzuki teams continue to compete in national events in selected countries, while the manufacturer organizes touring car championships that were never established as a valuable single maker series choice. Ten years have passed since the sub-10 at the peak. Gran Turismo still has a wide fan base all around the world, and every fan of the brand, no matter from which chapter he started playing, loves the Suzuki Escudo. Tejima, now 70 years old, he's still in the game as the owner of the Tejima Motor Corporation. He remembers about Pikes Peak. I first discovered the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb when I was a small boy. I was looking through a magazine and saw a picture of a stock car going flat out across the gravel finish line, with a man waving a checkered flag. I thought that looked fantastic. I wanted to race at Pikes Peak ever since, and in 1988 my dream came true. Since then, I won the race seven times, and this year I had the honor of winning and becoming the first driver to break the 10-minute barrier. It wasn't easy. The last remaining section of gravel, a three-mile stretch from Picnic Ground to Glen Cove, was very sandy this year, making it especially slippery. Making matters worse, I lost the power steering pump and water pump with one kilometer to go. When I crossed the finish line, I was completely exhausted. The steering was unbelievably heavy, a tough workout in the thin air. I was happy just to have finished and I didn't know I had broken the record until a TV crew told me. Needless to say, I'm very happy. I came to Pikes Peak this year with two goals, and I achieved them both. First, I wanted to win for the sixth consecutive time and break the 10-minute record. Second, I wanted to win for Japan. Following the earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident at Fukushima, my home country needed some cheering up. At the race, our team distributed Pray for Japan stickers, which several of my competitors placed on their cars. I am very grateful to them. Weeks later, I visited the Tohoku area, hoping to boost the morale of those who were hardest hit and give them some motivation. I believe that Japan can get through this tough time and come back strong again in the future. Nobuhiro will never be forgotten, as the Escudo will never be. They both marked the history of this sport, and Gran Turismo made this story known to as many people as possible. There are a Japanese, a car, a video game, and an American mountain road. 
Looks like the start of some joke, but, as we know, it's only the combination that led to this beautiful story, that deserves to be told to everyone. Set a goal for yourself, dream it, and then do everything to make it real.